Hello, and welcome to the test of a uh, rocket that I intend for Mars missions, but for now is destined for the Moon on this test. Uh, we're all lined up for the Moon with our relative inclination. The launch is going to be quite laggy because the rocket is 420, uh, uh, 4,220 tons, and uh, all the parts have a lot of configuration options and stuff like that. We've got uh, pretty nifty pods, for instance. The top pod is one of the Orion ones, and uh, we've also got an Alcor lander pod. Uh, so we've got all this going on for us. So that creates a lot of lag. Uh, there are a lot of little parts. I'm not gonna fly from here. I'm just, uh, I, I should stop. Okay, so. <laughs> um, this is very difficult to even load up sometimes, but uh, uh, we'll see. Uh, there's a high probability of uh, Kerbal death in this one, so I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, I'll talk more about the rocket on the way up because the lag is going to be so substantial I might as well have something to talk about. Okay, so we're throttled up. SAS is on. The rocket looks stable. Uh, probably wouldn't be if we had the, the crew tower attached. Uh, that always causes problems. So, yeah, it looks okay right now. And, yeah, I'll uh, speak more about it after we get this thing on the way, if it works. So, here we go. Okay. I'm actually pressing spacebar to try and release the clamps, and it's not quite working. There we go. Whoa. This is a very, uh, very borderline rocket. So uh, you can tell that uh, I've got a so Soyuz style there, uh, um, Saturn there, but that's not indicative of what the launcher actually is, and so we'll talk about that. Uh, I'm not wedded to the textures, by the way, I just went with what uh, seemed okay. But right now I'm more worried about clearing the tower. This is actually uh, going a lot faster than it seems. It's just because of the lag that it uh, looks so slow. Ah, uh, close. Okay, I think we've got that clear. All right, so uh, actually, if you uh, take a look, and one of the reasons why it's so laggy is because I got the high poly F1s here. These are F1As on the boosters. Uh, the center stack actually has uh, five RS68s, RS68As, I believe. Uh, let's uh, start uh, the roll program. And um, so the entire body here is a single stage filled with liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Uh, and that'll be burning all the way to orbit. So this is uh, the boosters separate and then it continues to orbit. Uh, so that's the configuration. And so a uh, word on why I decided on this. Obviously uh, you want the kerosene burning ones on the outside because you're going to drop them off. And it's just more efficient that way. They're, uh, high thrust, low ISP. I hate solid rocket boosters, especially on crewed missions, so I would absolutely not want to attach those on. Though uh, each of these only has half the thrust of a uh, space shuttle SRB, but uh, it's better to have the ability to shut the engines down, I think. So, so yeah, but we've got uh, F1As on the outside, and then the <clears throat> The reason we've got RS-68s instead of, say, the SLS's space shuttle engines or the equivalent on the Energia is because they have more thrust. Uh, the RS-68As have uh, 3,250 kilonewtons, and we've got five of them. We really couldn't fit too much more on the bottom of this with it being safe. So that's why I've got those on there, because they've got the high thrust. And uh, if you want an engine that has a high thrust a uh, high ISP on the surface and relatively high ISP in vacuum they have a 414 ISP in vacuum 
not as good as the space shuttle or the energy as rockets but still uh, pretty good and uh, if you want uh, the better thrust this is the only option okay so we've got five of those on there and they burn all of this fuel to get to orbit and then we've got seven RL-10s in the second stage and the second stage is actually the lunar transfer stage it is possible to uh, swap uh, these engines out for Russian equivalents I think uh, the, uh, the F-1As but uh, I went with this this time Okay, looks like it's about time to start a roll program. Uh, based on the thrust to weight profile of this, the roll program should be pretty smooth. Uh, not the roll program, sorry, pitch program. The pitch program should be pretty smooth. We, um, we should be very, very close to our prograde vector all the way through. I'm already pleased with the, with the performance of this right now. Should have put some more cameras in. But it's tough to load this thing in the VAB, I'll tell you that. And there's plenty of crashing involved in the, in the process of putting this together. I, yeah, and that's why I'm doing a video of this test, because I, it took so much time to get this uh, put together properly. I tried out different engine configurations initially. I tried the SLS-4 uh, um, Space Shuttle main engines on the bottom, for instance and that didn't work out in terms of ISP uh, not ISP, uh, Delta V uh, because I couldn't make this stage big enough and because the, that stage wasn't large enough uh, uh, and that's because of the thrust, right? Not enough thrust but because that stage wasn't large enough it wouldn't uh, have enough Delta V uh, tried some other engines on the outside uh, tried um, much larger boosters with two F1s I know they're planning that uh, they're planning to, uh, there's, there's a possibility for an alternate SLS booster that actually has two F1s on there, but the boosters just didn't look right and were way too big. So I decide against that option. Going pretty good so far. So the payload mass is 160 tons, uh, not including the base uh, decoupler uh, here, and uh, not decoupler, uh, the inner stage adapter. So uh, it's just this part that is, no, sorry, uh, this part, uh, including the second stage. The second stage is part of the payload to uh, low Kerbin orbit, not Kerbin, Earth, low Earth orbit. Uh, so uh, including the decoupler adapter, whatever you want to call it, uh, it's 175 tons. So uh, everything above this line is 175 tons. So it's pretty good. It's about 4% of the total launch mass is uh, being delivered to LEO one of the other benefits of the RS-68s as opposed to space shuttle main engines is that they're actually cheaper and if you're not going to reuse them remember the space shuttle main engines were made for reusability and it doesn't really make sense to use them on the SLS which is a non-reusable system so, I mean, if they eventually figure out how to make the SLS first stage reusable, that'd be great. But as long as it's not going to be reusable, it makes more sense to use the RS-68s. As I think was intended in the Constellation project, though, in Constellation, the rocket that was going to use the RS-68As uh, were, was not meant for crew purposes. It was simply cargo. Unfortunately, the cargo launcher, the Ares-1, no, not the cargo launcher, the, the crew launcher, the Ares-1, uh, just used a single spatial SRB as its launch, uh, launch stage, and that doesn't seem like a good idea. No, I think that's what they discovered eventually. But anyway, so these are things that people have actually thought about. Uh, using F1s on side boosters is something that is currently being considered. Uh, using uh, RS-68s uh, in a base stage like this is something that uh, was considered in the Constellation project. So all of this is very much uh, stuff people have thought about. 
Now, one of the downsides of this uh, configuration is that we get pretty close to 6 Gs on uh, at the end of the launch. So once we reach orbit, uh, it uh, approaches 6 Gs. That's if I don't throttle the engine though, and it so happens that the RS-68As are throttleable, just like the Space Shuttle main engines, and for the same reason, of course. So we will throttle down, and that will limit it to 4 Gs. I have to remember to do that. Looking good, we've passed the uh, sound barrier here. So yeah, I simply didn't have enough time to do anything else today, and I guess you could probably tell from my uh, speech pattern that uh, it's been it's been a while. I've uh, been working at this and a bit tired, so. Really hoping booster separation will work out correctly. That's that's my main worry right now. We should be around max Q now. Let's see. Yeah, we passed it. Uh, dynamic pressure is going down. Very nice so far. There's been explosions. Uh, this is uh, the first one. Uh, basically, uh, all, all mishaps have been solved with struts. I don't think you really needed to worry about that. All of that happened on the launch pad. Uh, basically, lots of wobblies, obviously. And so what you'll see is uh, inside here, there's actually a lot of struts uh, hanging things together. I don't think I put any struts at this point. Maybe should. But uh, yeah, mostly up here. So yeah. That was all uh, on the launch pad stuff though, so didn't think to uh, include all that preliminary stuff before we launched. But yeah, lots of ex launch pad explosions because of wobblies. Now we're launching out of Cape Canaveral, but I think this rocket uh, has enough delta V in these in this uh, first stage and booster stage to launch from other locations as well for uh, for a lunar trajectory or a potential Mars trajectory. Not trajectory, inclination really. So you can see we've been uh, very very close to the prograde vector all the way here. The key is once the boosters go off and we lose some of the thrust now unlike the using SRBs on the side, SRBs naturally have a diminishing thrust to them. Uh, these uh, F1s do not and you can't throttle them. We can throttle the RS-68s of course and we'll do that to limit the G-forces but in any case the G-forces are going to get pretty high once uh, these start, uh, start getting to the end of their burn. Now obviously the reason I chose the Soyuz style boosters is uh, simply for aerodynamic reasons. If you have the... Uh, I, I just didn't like the frontal area of having these boosters uh, full on, if you will. And this just seemed more aerodynamically efficient. I'm not wedded to the textures. I just uh, thought those were okay textures, not uh, something I will stick with necessarily. looking very good um, yeah lots of engine configurations I tried out. I tried out solid rocket boosters too um, they just didn't give enough Delta V really and uh, that's because their ISP is so low of course um, yeah I tried out a lot of stuff in the VAB just trying to uh, get uh, everything uh, this this portion was configured first 
so uh, the the whole uh, mission portion with the lander and the capsule and everything the command module and then of course the stage that would bring it to the moon or send it on uh, trans mars injection was configured ahead of time but then I had to figure out how to build a launcher that would send everything on its way and that was the tricky part well I wouldn't say that was the tricky part building the lander was chaos and in fact everything is built around the lander so I actually stuck the command module on top of it uh, the lander was the most uh, intricate part this got a lot of parts to it the lander has to be able to drill for cathane and that's the key right I mean we have to be able to do in situ resource utilization on Mars and that and then of course we have to land be able to land on Mars fill up the fuel tanks and then take off from Mars again so that is the key for uh, the for the lander and that is a tricky business okay I hope I've done I mean it seems like it's been the optimal trajectory for this rocket so far and I hope I've done enough to conserve the Delta V of it again it's a lot faster than it seems uh, from the video because we've got all this lag and you can see we haven't actually gone uh, very far horizontally from uh, from Cape Canaveral here okay it reads T plus three minutes uh, and we are awaiting LRV set. Of course, it's uh, three minutes since the engine started burning. Remember, the launch clamps took uh, quite a while to release. So uh, it's probably actually less than uh, three minutes if we count it from the time it lo uh, left the launch pad. Gotta throttle down a little bit on the RS 68s to limit our G forces. Okay, booster engines out, full thrust, and set. Ooh. Okay, very nice. Very nice indeed. I think that'll be good. Okay. Um, need to uh, eject the launch escape system now. And off that goes. Okay, and we can adjust our pitch. Good, good. Wow. All right. Um, let's see what Jeb's view looks like. It's got some stars out. He's uh, wow. He's uncomfortably close to Bill. I think is that Bill? And uh, oh yeah, Bob too, huh? Oh, wow, they're like smushed right next to each other in this thing. Hope the Orion capsule isn't actually like this. Tough to see the data here. Interesting thing. Of course, uh, better if we have that all gone. Not too sure I like the way the, they're placed. Yeah. 
There are more seats in the Orion capsule, though, so we could uh, potentially go to put them in uh, other seats so that Jeb is uh, probably alone in front here. Might be better. Okay, very nice. So uh, you can see we only have 3 minutes and 12 seconds left on this stage, so it's going to get uh, pretty fast soon in terms of acceleration. Our apoapsis is already uh, getting pretty good up there. This is pretty much the ideal profile. I, uh, the prograde vector has always been very close and yeah, th I'll have to make note of the thrust to weight ratios that I used here for future missions because this is as about as good as you can get. Uh, I think I forgot to put Ullage Rockets on this stage though. That's going to be a problem. We've got a token amount of RCS on the on the command module of course, but and technically on the lander portion as well, though uh, should have really disabled it while it's in there. The body of this is 10.5 meters in diameter. So just as a reference, this is 7 meters in diameter. I had to readjust some of the pods. The way they are in uh, Realism Overhaul, for some reason they're squished uh, in the vertical sense. They're very wide horizontally but squished vertically. I undid that. I think it might have been a conflict between uh, two mods or something like that. I don't think it was intended that way. I think uh, more than one mod was uh, messing with the capsules. Yeah, lots of Delta Beast to spare here. Now, oh, that was one thing when uh, trying to figure this out. I was very, very tempted to put the Space Shuttle main engines or equivalent engines like the Energia engines or the Mitsubishi, the ones that they use on the H2B on the first stage in the second stage. But of course, all of those are first stage engines and they're not designed to be lit in, in vacuum or even in the upper atmosphere. So... So I had to resist that temptation. This would have been a lot easier if I could have used those engines in the upper stage. Somebody please uh, make uh, one of those engines an upper stage engine because we need high thrust upper stage engines if we're going to have really big rockets like this. Of course, uh, nobody actually wants big rockets like this, but... Uh, that's part of the problem. It's better to do multiple launches than to have just one big rocket in theory. Uh, though in practice the time, the preparation, the manpower to get uh, launched together can sometimes uh, undo the benefit of having two smaller launches. Uh, but uh, that's that's a case-by-case -case sort of thing. It really depends. Yeah, but uh, for fun, it would be nice. I well, of course, I could have just slapped the uh, space shuttle main engines on there, and it would have worked. They're not very good in terms of thrust to weight ratio. They're very heavy, uh, but they're also uh, they've got that thrust, right? Uh, it's uh, not so good. What I've got here right now is seven RL tens. They still have a lower mass than a single space shuttle main engine, but they also have less thrust. They have like. Uh, a third of the thrust combined. More ISP, but uh, having a bigger second stage would have... Uh, well, so far this is working out quite nicely actually. Can't really complain. I didn't think this would uh, be quite so smooth. That's always the reaction. 
I mean, you have to remember, considering my most recent experience with this rocket was it exploding on the launch pad because of this wiggling out every time I had to time warp to line up with the moon, and uh, or uh, release the, the clamp that uh, which got, uh, allows the crew to get in. That clamp is annoying as anything, but uh, every time you release that clamp it wiggles this uh, pretty wildly, which is why I had to eventually remove it. But yeah, considering that was my experience with this rocket right before this launch, I think uh, maybe that helps you to understand why I've been, uh, I'm surprised at this point. Lots of Delta V, very nice. We are now in uh, space as far as real solar systems Earth is concerned. Nice view of Florida, the Bahamas, Cuba, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic there. Of course, the uh, eastern seaboard of the United States, very clearly visible. Had to time warp so that we could launch in daylight. Uh, the actually, if uh, you start at uh, day zero or day one, if you will, uh, the launch would have to happen at night. So you actually have to time warp through a better part of the year in order to get the Earth in the right position with relation to the sun, so that uh, if you're headed for the moon or for other planets, you can launch in daylight. We've got an inclination of 1.13. That's not very good, but this is just a test, so I'm not too worried. We're going to have some Delta V left. Let me see if it's okay to burn further, depending on where we are. Uh, might be better... I mean, obviously we can't relight these engines, so... It's not quite right. So right now it seems that we could uh, deal with a uh, heavier payload, possibly. Ah, the G-forces have been going up. Darn it. I was supposed to throttle back there. Sorry, guys. And actually, that would have made our uh, orbit smoother. Right now, the apoapsis is going out of control here. But that's sort of okay. Because we've got a lot of fuel left and I want to use it. You can think of it this way, that's fuel that really should have gone into the second stage. Okay, and it seems like we've got a imbalance of uh, liquid H2 and oxygen. So we ended up with, if I can click on this stage, there's always a problem for some reason. Ah, there we go. A little bit more liquid H2 there. All right. But with uh, considering the amount that we actually have in this tank, that's not much of a surprise. That's just a rounding error. Okay, so let's see. We've got a very high apoapsis, obviously. But again, I, I decided to let that go. I could have just changed our pitch to fix that. And I want to see how quickly we can get the... Because I don't have Ullage rockets, I need to put those on. Let's see how quickly we can get to the moon. It's not quite the right location. Uh-oh. 
Okay, so the game crashed, um, which happens when you're trying to deal with rockets like this. Uh, so I was going to try and plot for the moon. And we will try that once again. Okay, well, uh, no free return, but uh, we'll take it for now since this is just a test. No, I'll edge rockets. Uh, we'll have to separate now. Oop, I don't know what uh, that was. Okay, separation looks good. I don't know if we have enough uh, reaction wheel power to turn like this. I don't think we have much reaction wheel stuff. It's mostly RCS based. That's fine. I think we'll turn using the engine gimbling instead. As long as the engines can light. Let's see. Well, it's very stable for now. Uh-oh. Just went unstable. Okay, let's... Uh, try out RCS. Okay, RCS works. Very important, of course. Why isn't Smart ASS uh, taking over and hitting for a node, though? Oh, there we go. So probably we should start around six minutes before, maybe five minutes, to have an even amount of delta V on either side of the burn. Let's see. Okay. Very unstable now. Gonna try using the RCS to stabilize it. Okay, very stable. Whoa. Okay, sorry for that. That was really loud. How is it from inside? Pretty smooth. Uh, I think I've got Curb Quake in here, but it doesn't seem to be working with this pod. Huh. Okay, well I'll come back with, uh, with the end of this burn. Okay, here we go for the end of the burn. Okay, that didn't uh, happen exactly the way I would have wanted it to, but okay, we've got something. We'll have to fix it though. Okay, so uh, you can see that we do have uh, fuel remaining and that's because this stage is meant to get us to Mars. And uh, of course, uh, we also benefited from the launch stages uh, the fact that I put it into an eccentric orbit and so we're going to have to shove some more fuel in this stage and less fuel in the launch stage but that is not a big problem we managed to do, th do this part uh, now it comes tricky business as we have to reconfigure everything it's sort of like Apollo in this mission but let's uh, time warp till we're in daylight first okay Oh, only 12 minutes to the mid-course change. I don't know if that's enough time for me. 
Okay, so we've got a few remaining, but we're just going to have to ditch that. And yeah, I think... Well, this is tricky because I, I have to figure out how I did all the stuff in the top. It's been a while since I've even seen it. Alright, well, let's try this. Hmm. These fairings don't seem to want to detach properly. That's not very helpful. Uh, maybe we can uh, pull ourselves forward. Let's not go too far here. Well, if I'm making a video, this is going to be a problem. I mean, I'm making a video with this on uh, more, uh, let's say, an EDB mission controlish style video. This is not good. Gonna have to. I think maybe uh, just updating procedural fairings uh, might help, or just uh, upping the ejection force on these. Uh, I might have an old install of uh, procedural fairings in this in this install. But yeah, we're uh, casually pulling everything out of here. I think uh, the lander is still attached, so just sort of. Uh, Sneaking out here, nothing, nothing popping out so far, but I, I expect that'll happen. You can see uh, a slightly different sort of service module on this. This is actually another RL10. It's uh, well, it's the common extensible cryogenic engine, which is just a modified RL10. Fuel flow unpressurized. Oh, so I I forgot to make this into a into a service module tank. Must do that. That's not going to help. Which fuel does this use? This uses uh, the liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen. In the case of a Mars mission, that will be changed. This cannot use uh, liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen for that. It'll have to be methane, liquid oxygen, which will actually make this heavier. So maybe that'll change some of my math. Of course, if this is liquid methane, then, well, it'll still need a... I, I don't know if it'll need a pressure... Well, yeah, I don't know if it'll need a pressurized situation there. Okay, um... I think we're okay to try and uh, decouple this. Bulging happening out here. Okay. Oh, darn. Oh, well, I got... Yeah, we'll have to somehow knock that out of the way. Alright. Um, let's target this docking port. So now you can see the lander. And it's got a lot of food, water, and oxygen. It's got enough for more than 200 days. That's not enough for the Mars mission. That's why the Mars mission will have to be sent up in two, two parts. Is because uh, we need a more substantial transfer vessel than just this. So what will happen is that the lander and... Uh, well, I'll have to uh, take a look at exactly what I want to send up. I just need capacity on this. Oh, we still got the docking port. Uh, not the docking port. The the which we got the coupler on there. We can just uh, send that off. Or is it being sent off? Nope. Yeah, it's separated now. I don't particularly mind if we end up with the ring around it. <laughs> okay, so we'll have one of those with us. <laughs> no biggie. I just want to conserve as much of the fuel as possible. Okay, we have contact. Yes. Okay, good. So you can see a few things about this. 
Uh, in particular, you'll note that it is meant to jettison the drill unit and the and the converter unit before taking off again from either Mars or the Moon. And that's essential to make sure that we dispense with any extra mass. I don't know if that whole system will work out or whether it'll prevent us from drilling properly. So that's something I'm looking into. We will find out. Now let's uh, fine-tune our mid-course plane change. Okay, let's see if this works. No, it doesn't. Okay, uh, different plan. Let's let's send some crew into the Alcor. Okay. Gonna say control from here. And let's see now. So, one thing about the lander is that I modified the Super Draco engines that come with the LazTech SpaceX pack. And I modified them to use liquid methane, liquid oxygen. And I would recommend that uh, Elon Musk looks into modifying the Super Dracos however it needs to happen to uh, use liquid methane liquid oxygen because that's a very helpful thing if you're going to try and uh, create methane on Mars which is the plan by the way so and uh, it's no good having uh, the only engines that currently burn uh, liquid methane are really big and so we really need small radial engines like the like the Super Dracos that can that can burn liquid methane and that will be very important for a potential Mars mission. I don't know, considering that uh, the liquid methane production is a key part of the NC2 resource utilization plan for Mars, it's surprising. I haven't heard much about a liquid meth small liquid methane engine that could be used for a Mars mission yet. It's probably being developed, but I, I just haven't heard about it. Okay, this is obviously not the best way to do this, but we'll, we'll, we'll try it out. Okay. And there we go. Nope, oh, we lost that somehow. Good. Nope, I need uh, SAS on. Ooh, do the Super Dracos not gimbal? I thought they would, but okay, uh, we need s some uh, RCS burn here. Okay, uh, let's stop that. Closest approach distance doesn't really say anything. Uh, it looks like we're on a crash course right now. We'll fix that as we get in there. This is pretty bad though. We've burned some of this fuel and we needed that for landing. Hmm. Let's transfer everybody over. Uh, we, we should have done that in the first place. We should have transferred everybody over here and just done the burn with this stage, but I don't think we're going to have enough anyway. But let's try it. Let, let me see how much uh, Delta V we have. Okay, so everybody's over in the Alcor. And we're actually going to ditch this since that engine isn't working out right. So what do we have here? Delta V stats. Uh, that's not enough. 
that would be enough for uh, landing on Mars because you can use the atmosphere to slow you down. Maybe enough for landing on Mars. Still need to test that. But it's not going to be enough for landing on the moon. And we haven't even gotten into lunar orbit yet. So, okay, I think this is the end of this mission as far as this is concerned. Um, yeah, yeah, I think uh, that is uh, enough for me. So, I'll have to continue testing this. Uh, sorry to have to cut the mission off here. But uh, we did test the launcher, and that was the goal of this. Uh, just didn't have enough time to make anything else in terms of videos beyond this. I guess we could take a look at the IVA in Alcor while we're at it. So this is the Alcor IVA, a very nice one. Um, I don't know if what turns on the lights in this IVA view. I think there must be lights somehow. But yeah, uh, so we can... Wow, it's got cams already. So there are, there are cams around the Alcor module. The, all the displays are very sophisticated here. And I will be looking forward to using that in a proper manner in the future. Alright, so... Yep, with that, thank you for watching this test of a new launch system that may bring Kerbals over to Mars. And, uh, yep, uh, if you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you did like this video, please do press like. And with that, uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.